Hi everyone. Today I will talk about Schubert's beautiful song Aftenthalt, arranged by Johann Kaspar Merz. This is a particularly skilled and uh, masterful arrangement by Johann Kaspar Merz. This is music-wise one of those pieces of Schubert which has a huge dramatic tension. It has a lot of psychological implications and it takes us through a lot of emotions in a very condensed piece of music which lasts only about three or four minutes. Therefore, all this makes for a very um, difficult piece, piece to play where we have to give all into making it work as a, as a totality. I will for talk here about some technical tips and I will s share some opinions regarding this piece with you. Avonhalt starts with a piano introduction, much like most of the songs of Schubert. And the indication written there is piano. But we, ha we need to have in mind um, that the context within which it, it, the indication is piano is very important here. Uh, it says piano in the original score and also in the arrangement, but played on a keyboard with a repetitive notes, it is not possible to have a very quiet sound. So piano here is not an indication of the uh, volume, nor an indication of the mood of the piece, because the context, the content is very dramatic. Uh, it is rather an indication of the pianist to not play too loud before the singer comes in with the punch line. So I suggest that we don't play the beginning very soft, although it says piano. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but it is, I believe, strongly what the music requires. so on. Uh, we again we need to give space to the singer and that is also indicated by the composer with the decrescendo on the piano which I think only has a functional reason for being there. The function of it is to give the space to the singer. Lights on and here's our Pavarotti. more intense can it get? Yes, the next one. All this makes for a very beautiful piece which takes the guitar and the guitar player into the limits of what we can do together as, as music makers. This is what makes this piece very difficult to play. The driving force of this song is the repetitive chords and the accompaniment. That's what moves this piece and that's what uh, creates this sense of desperacy in the composer, which is quite typical in Schubert's all over work. Uh, here we have a, a wonderful setting for the guitar because we have open strings, but that also creates for a kind of awkward technical situation for the guitar because all strings vibrate and we have to repetitively uh, come back to them uh, while they're vibrating. So it's, it is important to have extreme caution for the way we go back to those strings because this is not a piece that tolerates breaking the sound uh, or um, distorting uh, in any way the sound while it still requires a great sound. So we have to be at the edge of the possibility of the guitar without going beyond. And from my own experience, I can tell you 
many times at concerts I went a little bit over the edge and it did not sound good. So I suggest you don't do the same thing I did. But what, what is important is just to be aware of the problem, which is sort of half, halfway to solving it. Uh, the problem is that the strings are vibrating and while they're vibrating, you have to cautiously get behind them without touching them with, with the nails or something. So. Also, what helps a lot in building and uh, creating and maintaining that tension is moving all the time with the dynamics, doing a constant crescendo, decrescendo, which is indicated by the composer as well. But keep in mind that this is written at the beginning of the 19th century. The composers did not write every single detail of the way they wanted the piece to be interpreted, like it is custom today in the contemporary music. So we have to be aware that some indications are there to be taken and some are to be assumed because of the indication which is given somewhere. So you might think as if he wrote a crescendo and decrescendo several times, but he means it simile, uh, which means continue like this in other times as well. So I think uh, a constant movement uh, in dynamics helps us get through the piece. One of the biggest characteristics of Schubert's, Schubert's music is the ability to create color uh, by just the harmonic uh, content. Um, it is quite fascinating the way he, he suggests a change of color, although it is not necessarily possible to do that on the piano. But what we have here on the guitar is the possibility of great change of cover and a very sudden change of cover. However, sometimes we don't even have enough time to, to, to switch from one position to the other. So in that case, I suggest just changing the angle because in Schubert's music, things change real quick and sudden, and it's important to follow that. It's sort of uh, a descriptive of a very moody person with the change of, 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 of mood. So that is important to follow uh, through. In this song, the second verse has a different melody and is, is, uh, is a different sort of mindset. Um, it is uh, nicely um, indicated by the arranger, who says sotto voce and then says sempre, sempre agitato. Uh, and both of these indications work very well with what is, needs to be said in the, about the second verse. So we'll go the transition from the first verse to the second. Piano intermission, sotto voce, second verse. I remember the first moment I was, I fell in love with Schubert's music. I perhaps fell in love is not the best word. That's the first moment I was taken into a place which was completely unknown to me. Um, and that was suggested mostly, mostly by the, his harmonic world, by this sudden harmonic changes. I would like to talk a little bit about that. Um, I remember that the first time um, I got introduced to this wondrous harmonic world of Schubert was when I was listening casually, quite casually, a uh, piano, the C minor piano sonata, uh, one of the last sonatas of Schubert. And I was not really listening, I was writing something as it was in the background, but then the second movement started. And it's the piano sonata resembled the pathetic sonata by Beethoven, which at that time I, I happened to know. This was many years ago, I'm afraid to say. But then second movement started, 
and it again resembled the second movement of a pathetic sonata by Beethoven, and it was in the same key. But then something happened. Let me illustrate on the guitar. I'm not quite sure if you can do it, but this was the beginning. Everything seemed normal. I didn't expect this, but it's still normal. And then... Now, when I heard that, what I thought at that time as a guitarist, F sharp minor, I was shaken by the music. I, I, was, I was taken to another world all of a sudden. It was a chord which had the impact of a thousand poetries, of a thousand stories untold. That was the moment when I got you know, into Schubert's world. And um, yeah, I never came out since uh, is this. So within this harmonic context, he just goes real quick to somewhere really far and comes back instantly. That's an unforgettable moment for me. And um, perhaps some of you might have a moment like that. I really wish you to enjoy music in that way that uh, I don't think there is any other joy comparable to it. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was a pleasure uh, doing this for the tone-based community. Thank you.